Hello, I'm Alita Winternheimer, your writing coach at Word Essential. Welcome to this unboxing video, the great preview of the StoryWorks Guide to Writing Point of View, how to harness the power of POV and write amazing narratives. All right, so what do you get in the StoryWorks Guide to Writing Point of View? Well, you get 16 chapters. Let's run through these quickly. How to use this book. Now, if you've read character, the first chapter there is also how to use this book. And I just want to point out that there are a few paragraphs, just a few, that I lifted from character. One paragraph, two paragraphs. The creative power of pre-writing by hand, because it just bears repeating and then the examples in this book. So um, everything else in this chapter is new and specific to point of view. So don't skip it. <laughs> point of view primer. Chapter two is a really important chapter because I go through the terminology that is part of the literary canon. And it is the terminology that we're going to be using in this book. So chapter two is going to get you familiar with those terms. It's also going to act as a quick reference if you need to go back and look anything up. Now, if anything in this book is daunting, it's probably going to be chapter two, especially if those words are unfamiliar to you. But don't worry. <laughs> in the rest of the book, you are going to encounter those terms within the context of a conversation about fiction and point of view. Everything will be defined again, so you don't have to memorize what's in chapter two. And besides being in context, I give you lots of examples and lots of excerpts. So this really is a guide. It's a how-to book. I'm serious about that. This is not literary theory. It's a how to write craft book. All right, chapter three, what is point of view? Laying some groundwork there. Four, heart your narrator, all about the narrator. Then we have a special section, an excerpt that you can use for one of the exercises in chapter four. Five, don't stand so close to me. That's all about distance, which is a huge topic. Uh, six, making introductions. When a reader opens a book, your point of view is the first thing that that reader encounters. And that's not just the point of view character, it's the entire narrative constructs of your book. Seven, the right point of view, how to choose a point of view for your story. Eight, he said, she said, that's about third person point of view. Keeping them all straight, working with multiple points of view, playing God, the omniscient, obviously. 11, it's mine, all mine, first person. 12, trust me, that's trust me, because it's about the unreliable narrator. 13, earning their keep, how to make sure you're choosing the right point of view and that that point of view is actually earned and is the best one for your story. Don't dump on your reader or your reader will dump you. Chapter 14 is about info dumps. 15, effectively affecting your reader how to use your narrative point of view to move your reader and to compel that reader to keep turning pages. Then we have another special section, name that point of view. There's some great excerpts in there from a variety of genres. 16, problems with point of view and how to fix them. That's your quick reference troubleshooting guide. Now you may have noticed some structure there as I went through the table of contents. Um, chapters one through three are your introduction to point of view. It's a large, sometimes overwhelming topic. So chapters one through three lay that groundwork. Four and five introduce you to the narrator and help you understand his role and how distance functions in your story. Six and seven 
They should convince you of the importance and primacy of narrative point of view in any story. 8 through 11, those deal with the specifics of person. So we've got the chapter dedicated to third person, multiple, omniscient, and first person. They each get their own chapter. 12 through 15 go deep into special topics. That's the unreliable narrator, the info dumps, etc. So that's an overview of the contents of this book. Now, I just want to point out that the book is full of graphics, such as this one. <laughs> also, that the book is heavily formatted because this is a how-to guide and there's a lot of material to cover. So in this book, you're going to find a body, font, tables, subheaders, a separate font for excerpts, those graphics I talked about. There are also pull quotes to make, um, to have certain text stand out. And each chapter is going to have exercises. There are 19 exercises in this book. We've got multiple layered lists with numbers and multiple types of um, bullets. And then the recap sections, those are at the end of each and every chapter so that you can quickly come back after you've read the book and find that piece of information that you're looking for. This is really meant to be a reference tool that you can keep at your writing desk and use over and over. And because of that formatting, I recommend you buy the paperback. Now, it doesn't matter to me because of the print costs. I get the same amount of money whether you buy the paperback or the ebook. But e readers handle that formatting differently. So, fonts go to defaults. Some of the spacing around the paragraphs disappears. You aren't going to see scene breaks the same way in an e reader as you do in a paperback. And that matters, especially in one of these excerpts in the omniscient chapter, because I'm talking about how to know when the point of view character has shifted and how I use a line of white space to visually signal that to the reader. So in the paperback, you'll see that. And in the ebook, you won't, because it deletes that line of white space unless you've created a list, unfortunately. So how will you know that there has been a scene break? Well, the first paragraph after the line of white space is not indented. So a little bit of uh, standardized formatting there. When you've got a scene break, you don't indent that next paragraph. We do that because these sometimes fall on page breaks. So this is the convention to help readers identify that that shift has occurred. So that's why I want you to buy the paperback, not the ebook for your reading experience. And I put this book and all of my books into Amazon's Matchbook program. What that means is when you buy the paperback, you get the ebook for free. So if you buy the paperback, then you just go to the ebook, tell Amazon you want to buy it, and it will let you know that you get it for free because you already purchased the paperback. This book is 300 pages of body text. There are 36 pages of front and back matter. It's quite a bit bigger than character. So <laughs> this is a thorough, thorough guide on point of view. That doesn't mean it's exhaustive. It doesn't mean there's not something left to be said about point of view. So if you have questions, find me online. Come to wordessential.com. Go to my writing tips, the StoryWorks Roundtable. Email me a question. Suggest a topic for the writing tips or the show. I would be happy to hear from you because every book, 
every text is a conversation between the author, the book, and its readers. So by all means, close that loop. Send me a question if you have it. All right. I hope, I hope that satisfies your curiosity and encourages you to get your hands on the StoryWorks Guide to Writing Point of View companion and sequel to the StoryWorks Guide to Writing Character. Have a great writing day.